Most tutorials show you how to implement sprinting and stamina using Event Tick, but that's a terrible practice for production. You might not notice the issue in small projects, but once your game scales up, your performance will take a serious hit. In this video, I'll show you the right way using set timer by function name instead of running logic every single frame. This approach drastically reduces resource usage and can be applied to more than just stamina, making your game far more optimized. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. It really helps me keep creating content like this. I'm using the third person template for this project. First, go to project settings. In the engine section, search for input. Next, under action mappings, click add, name it sprint, and bind it to left shift by simply pressing the left shift key on your keyboard. Okay, let's head over to the content drawer, then go to third person blueprints and open BP third person character. I just want to write down the variables and functions that we'll need. The first variable is, is sprinting, and it should be a boolean with the default value set to false. The second variable is stamina, and this one should be a float. We'll compile and set its default value to 100. Next, we need stamina consumption rate, which should also be a float, and we'll set its default value to 1. The next one is stamina recovery rate, which should also be a float. We'll compile and set its default value to 1. Now, we need walk speed, and this one should be a float with a default value of 300. Next, we have sprint speed, which should be a float with a default value of 600. The last variable we need is max stamina, which should be a float set to 100. But of course, you can change these values as you like. Alright, now let's create the first function. The first function will be sprint timer function and the second one will be stamina recovery function. So, now we have two functions, sprint timer function and stamina recovery function. These are the variable we'll be using. Stamina consumption rate, stamina recovery rate, walk speed, sprint timer function and stamina recovery function. Be sure that you have all of them. Okay, next, head over to your event graph. Inside the event graph, right click and search for input action sprint. This is the action we created earlier in project settings under input. Now, hold alt and bring in is a sprinting two times. The first one should be set to true and the second one should be set to false. Next, call set timer by function name and connect the is a sprinting set to true into this node. Copy the sprint timer function name into the function input, set the time to 0.2 comma and enable looping for set timer by function name. The next thing we need is the character movement component. This is the character movement which we'll use to set the maximum walk speed. Now bring in set max walk speed and connect the is sprinting set to false when we release the input action sprint key. Then connect the walk speed node we created earlier with its default value into max walk speed. Next, search for clear timer by function name and copy paste the function name from above into this node to clear that function. Then copy paste set timer by function name again and connect it to stamina recovery function. Now, instead of calling this function on every tick, it will execute every 0.2 seconds. This way, we don't need to run it on every single frame. Okay, let's head over to sprint timer function in our blueprint. First, we need to check for clear timer by function name. We want to make sure that stamina recovery doesn't run while sprinting, so we clear that function. Now, get is sprinting and stamina to check if stamina is greater than zero. Then bring in an and boolean node to check if the character is sprinting and stamina is still above zero. If you're finding this helpful, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. 
Next, bring in sprint speed and character movement and set the maximum walk speed to sprint speed. This means that as long as you have stamina, you will be able to run at 600 speed, which is our sprint speed value from the variables. Now, we need to reduce stamina. Bring in stamina and subtract the stamina consumption rate from it. Then take stamina consumption rate and multiply it by 0.1. You can adjust this value to fine tune how quickly stamina drains. Now, connect this result to the subtract node for stamina and then set stamina to this new value. After setting the new stamina, we need to check if it's less than or equal to zero. If that happens, it means the character can't sprint anymore. So bring in a branch node and check if stamina is less than or equal to zero. If that's true, set is sprinting to false. Then get the character movement component and set the maximum walk speed back to walk speed. If the player runs out of stamina, sprinting will stop and the character will return to normal walking speed. Now. We need to clear the active timer using clear timer by function name, the same function we were running for sprinting. After clearing it, create a new set timer by function name. What do we want to do here? Since the character is no longer sprinting, we need to start stamina recovery. So we set the timer interval to 0.2 seconds and enable looping. That's all we need to do inside the sprint timer function to keep it clean and efficient. Next, we'll move on to stamina recovery function. If you're finding this helpful, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Okay, let's head over to stamina recovery function. Inside stamina recovery function, we want to set up our recovery system. First, bring in stamina and max stamina. We need to check if stamina is less than max stamina, so we don't over recover stamina. Now, create a branch node to check if stamina is less than max stamina. If that's true, we proceed with recovery. To get the new stamina value, we need to clamp the stamina so it stays inside the range. So first take stamina and add stamina recovery rate to it. Then multiply this by 0.1. You can adjust this number to control how fast stamina regenerates. You can also directly multiply it by any number you want if you prefer to fine tune the recovery rate. Now we need to clamp the value. The input will be the updated stamina, the minimum value should be zero, and the maximum should be max stamina. Then connect the output of clamp float to set the new stamina value. After that, we bring in clear timer by function name and use it to clear stamina recovery function. This makes sure that once stamina is fully recovered, the function stops running. That's everything we needed to set up inside stamina recovery function. Now, let's move on to the widget blueprint. Okay, head over to your content drawer, right click anywhere, go to user interface, then select widget blueprint. For the name, let's call it WBP stamina. Now, double click on this widget to open it up. Let me adjust the window. On the left side in the palette, search for canvas panel and text. Now, we have both canvas panel and text added. Make sure to check is variable for the text and rename it to text block underline stamina. Now, on the right side in the content section, we need to create a binding. Inside this binding, we first get the player character. Then we cast it to BP third person character to make sure that we're accessing the correct character. This way, we ensure that the casting doesn't fail. Now, from here, we get stamina and connect it to the return node. That's all we have to do for the binding. Next, go to BP third person characters event graph and we need to override begin play to create the widget. Inside here, we select the widget class WBP stamina and add it to the viewport. That's all we need to do to display WBP stamina inside the game. Now, if we hold shift, you'll see in the top left corner, the number decreases from 100 to 99, then 98, and it keeps decreasing. 
and when we release shift, the character starts walking and stamina regenerates. Okay, that's the most efficient way to set up a stamina system while avoiding event tick. Now, let's add a bonus feature. Alright, you've watched this far. So, let's add a bonus feature. Head over to WBP Stamina and bring in a progress bar. Drag and drop it into the canvas, then resize and style it however you like. Now, compile it. On the right hand side in the details panel, go to percent. We'll do the same thing we did for get text block. Simply copy and paste the blueprint logic from there. Now, for the return value of stamina, we need to divide it by 100 to get the correct value for our progress bar. Compile it, save it, and run the game. Now, as you can see, we have a progress bar that updates in real time without any issues. For better testing, let's tweak some values. In BP underscore third person character, let's change stamina consumption rate. Instead of 1, I'll set it to 10, while keeping the recovery rate the same. Now, when we sprint, stamina drains much faster. And all of this works without using event tick, keeping our system efficient. I hope this helps you create a better and more optimized sprinting and stamina system. That's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. It keeps the content coming and really supports the channel.